I'll catch you next. Welcome, Pat. Thanks for coming up here. Thank um, you, sir. So I'm a second generation Italian immigrant, Harrison, New Jersey. There you go. Roots. All right. Um, and I'm also a lifelong independent, leaning Republican who voted for Biden. And it was really against the other fella and not for him as much. So now you're in the race. Yep. And the last time around, he had his percentages that were rock solid and everybody else split everything else. Two part question. Yep. One, why is it going to be different this time? Because you have the same mathematic working against you and everyone else mm -hmm. not named Trump. And secondly, you threw in with him. You were all in with him for a period of time. I was. What changed? Election night 2020. OK. OK, look, um, when I had, I had David Cameron, the former uh, prime minister of Great Britain, asked me one time to explain what he called this crazy system you all have of electing presidents. And I said, the thing you need to understand, David, more than anything else is we don't get to vote for most of the time what we want to vote for. We get to vote for who's left. So in 2016, it was Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, the most unpopular major presidential candidate in the history of polling on Election Day 2016. Who was the second most unpopular presidential candidate in the history of polling? Donald Trump. I made the choice. And I would not change that choice from 2016. Because I think Hillary Clinton would have been an awful president too. When 2020 came around, I also thought that Joe Biden was simply too old for the job. I didn't think he was up for it. I'd known, Mary Pat and I have known Joe Biden for 40 years. We both went to the University of Delaware. We've known him since we were college students. And I think in his heart, he's a good man. Everything I've ever known about him is that he's a good guy, but he's too old. It's over. But on election night 2020, when Donald Trump came out at 2.30 in the morning and said the election has been stolen, when I know that he couldn't have even known whether it was or it wasn't, votes were still being counted. Um, that was it for me. When you're the president of the United States and you stand behind that seal of the president in the East Room of the White House and you tell the American people the election has been stolen, most of the American people are going to think, well, he's president. He must know something. And they're going to believe him. And that's what's happened. To this day, the majority of our party believes the 2020 election was stolen. And they believe that because Donald Trump lied to them and they bought the lie. That night, I said on television at 2.30 in the morning, I'm done. I can't support this guy any longer in any way from now till the end. And I spoke out against him in 17, 18, 19, and 20 when I thought he was wrong. And that's why I didn't take a position in his administration. He offered me Secretary of Homeland Security. He offered me Secretary of Labor. In 2018, he offered me White House Chief of Staff. And I turned them all down because I knew I couldn't work for him. Couldn't work for somebody like that. Now, why will it be different this time? Let's look at the newest poll that just came out in New Hampshire. Forget the national polls. Let's look at what's happening here. Because the election for president is not a national election in the primary. It's a state-by-state -state election. No matter what the national polls say. He's still in first, but he's got 34% in the latest poll that just came out on Friday. Ron DeSantis is at 13. I'm at 11. Everyone else is in single digits. Think about what that means. 66% of New Hampshire Republicans and independents who will participate don't want him. This race will get smaller over time. The people who don't qualify for the stage, I don't know how they can stay in the race. I think we're going to have eight people on the stage. We have 14 people running. So that means I think six will be gone. Either right around that time or pretty soon thereafter because they won't be able to raise money and sustain a campaign if you can't be on the stage for the debate. Then once these debates happen, we saw this happen eight years ago. People fell off then, too. Remember, Scott Walker was in the first two debates. Remember Scott Walker? He's going to be president of the United States. He was the front runner in Iowa. He was gone by September of 2015. I think this race, when you get to New Hampshire um, and get to voting here, I think it's going to be five or six people. And I believe if it's down to that kind of number that he could be beaten because I think his number is somewhere in the 30s. And... Part of the reason why we have to be this direct about it is because people need to know this is in their hands. It's not a foregone conclusion. The polls today tell us it's not a foregone conclusion. It's up to you to decide. And I would say to you that if you think the party and the country needs a new direction, 
don't vote for somebody either like Donald Trump or some of my other competitors who say they're pretty much like him. You know, this is like if you like Coca-Cola. If you like Coca-Cola and Coke comes out with new Coke and Coke is still available, well, you're going to buy Coke because you're like, oh, what do you need new Coke for? Ron DeSantis is new Coke. <laughs> That's what he is. Now, if, if Coca-Cola was no longer available, maybe new Coke would get a little traction. But you still got the people who like Coca-Cola. He's there. You, he was here in New Hampshire today. You can go vote for him. I don't think we need a slight change from the character and approach of Donald Trump. I think we need a significant change from the character and approach of Donald Trump. I, I would just do. And if the if we're going to try to bring this country back together, this doesn't mean we won't fight. Of course we'll fight. You're Italian-American, so am I. Our families, they fought all the time. All the time. About big things and small things. But if somebody from the outside came in and tried to take one of us on, then it became a whole other matter. That's what this country has to get back to. We can fight amongst ourselves all we like about the issues that are important to us, and we should. The founders set it up that way. But when we have threats to the very core of who we are, either from outside forces or from malignant forces within, like a failed education system, well, then we better band together. And we need a president who's willing to do that and not put themselves first. That's why I'm going to get to your question now, but that's why this whole America first thing from Donald Trump is the biggest joke I've ever heard in my life. He never puts America first. It's Donald Trump first. Donald Trump first. Everything else behind that. And we need a, a president who is now going to say America first. I'll tell you one quick story. When I was governor of New Jersey, I got elected in a three-way race the first time with 48% of the vote. And a lot of people wondered whether I was able to do this or not, how I was going to bring things together. And I had a reporter ask me one day, Governor, you're saying things that are politically unpopular. The polls say that. How do you think you're going to get reelected? This is my first year. I said, look, I don't care if I'm reelected. And I'll tell you why. Because I already get the portrait. <laughs> you get elected once, you get the portrait. The artist comes in, they paint you, it gets hanged on the wall in the state house. All you're arguing about now is what the little brass plaque says. Is it four years or eight years? Hell, man, I'm not selling my soul for a brass plaque. The honor is getting elected the first time. The duty is doing the right thing when you get elected. And by the way, I said all those politically incorrect, difficult things in those four years, I got 48% of the vote in 2009. In 2013, I got 61% of the vote. The truth matters, and people want the truth. You're next. All right, Catherine.